Hello everybody. In this video we're going to take a look at an interesting uh, little amplifier. This is a Knight, uh, that's K-N-I-G-H-T, uh, from 1968. It's a model KM-15. Uh, the KM-15 is a, as the name would suggest, a little uh, more or less 15 watt um, mono block, little hi-fi amplifier. Uh, these were made in the late 60s by Knight. Um, they were also called, um, according to this, and I'm, I'm not, I'm guessing that's correct, Allied Radio out of Chicago. Um, this one has been converted uh, for guitar, as you can see I'm missing the phono plug here. Uh, we will go through the entire conversion process uh, of what it took to convert this thing into a, into a kick-ass little guitar amplifier. Uh, we'll go through each stage of the process. Uh, this one is especially kick-ass because it has uh, two EL84s in the power section uh, and it has two 12AX7s uh, and when you have two 12AX7s, a couple, a couple stages of gain and a, a long tail pair uh, phase inverter, um, you, have, you have a lot of gain on your hands at the end of the day. It's a really, really killer sound of the little amplifier. We'll go through the whole process of converting it uh, in for guitar. Uh, it also has an EZ80 rectifier um, originally, but I have actually changed the rectifier, and we'll discuss all that as well and the rectifier options and, and everything as we go along. Uh, I've installed this, um, this handle here, and you're actually seeing this fully converted at, at, the, uh, at the end of the process, uh, but we'll go back through the whole process first, and at the end of this video, if you stick around long enough, we will take a listen to what this thing sounds like, and I think you'll... Uh, I think you'll be surprised and you'll want to and you'll definitely want to hear that. So stick around and we'll get into it. It's kind of small. Uh, you can see here how how big it is or how little it is, I guess. Um, two EL84s, two 12AX7s, um, slash 7025s. And uh, for the rectifier, it's an EZ80 that's in there now, also known as the 6V4. Uh, you can also put in an EZ81, which is the 6CA4. Um, and it will also handle a 6BW4, which um, the 6BW4 is actually a, a pretty um, little known rectifier tube uh, by comparison to some of the others as far as the 6 volts, and they tend to be a lot less expensive. So if you have one of these amps and you're looking for a rectifier tube, uh, look for a 6BW4. That's, that's a good secret. Um, this one has uh, on the transformers, it has a 5 code here for 1965 and it has an 8 code here for 1968, so three years apart on the transformers. This one is, uh, the code on here is an 8 for 68. On the uh, cap can we have, a, we have a 40, 60, a 20, and a 20. That last 20 looks like it is a bypass cap, probably for the output tubes. Um, not a not a huge uh, transformer. Uh, it's about what you'd expect for an amp this size. Uh, we have volume, bass, treble, on off switch. Uh, this is a switch for phono and tuner. Um, originally, this obviously would have been a little mono block uh, amp for hi-fi. Um, you would have plugged your record player in here, and this would have been your radio tuner. Um, made by Allied Radio of Chicago. On the back side, we have uh, our impedance selector, uh, and weirdly enough, there's no. Oh, okay. You just hook your speakers up, um, just to common, and then whichever uh, homage you want. So this would this substitutes as a speaker jack. So we're gonna obviously have to replace this. Uh, if we're go we're gonna convert this into a guitar amp, uh, and we're gonna replace this with a regular speaker jack, a quarter inch. We'll probably replace this two-prong cord as well. Uh, still got the original two prongs, so we'll replace that. Uh, there is no fuse in here, um, so we have to put a fuse in it. Um, this thing did have some notes. Let's see. Let me actually... Oh, that'll be fine. Flip. Turn it somewhere where we can both see it, and it's not going to damage some tubes. Here we go. There we go. Um... This thing had some notes that came with it and some little notes written on paper in here, which isn't going to matter a whole lot to us because we are going to, um, you know, we're probably going to modify this circuit quite a bit anyway. I've uh, downloaded the schematic. Uh, luckily, I, I was able to find one. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the schematic now and uh, see what sorts of changes we would like to make. 
Okay, getting our first look at the schematic for this thing, we can see it uh, does have two 12AX7s. Uh, here's one down here. Uh, here's the other up here. Uh, this one is the phase inverter. Um, our, here are our output tubes. Um, power rail here. Uh, we have two inputs. The phono is probably the one that we're going to keep. We're going to get rid of the other one entirely because um, we only really need one input for a guitar amp. So we're going to come into probably the phono since it's already hooked into the first uh, tube. The, the problem with where this tube is, it's kind of a weird layout inside the amp. Um, this tube, v, the V1 tube, is actually the furthest one away from the inputs. Um, it's kind of on the other side of the amp, sort of, uh, from the inputs. So there's, you know, there are um, shielded uh, wires running uh, to to the input. Uh, so you can see here as well, there's a shielded wire um, running there also. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's not quite ideal. Um, and we're going to come in here also and look at uh, probably the values. We may just basically kind of strip this thing back. We're definitely going to get rid of this tuner um, input. We won't use this switch in the same way. If we do use this switch, it's going to be for probably something else. Since we have a switch, it might be cool to hook it up to something else. Maybe, I don't know, a negative feedback switch perhaps or uh, something like that so we can have a little more uh, flexibility. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we we'll probably will use that switch for something. Uh, our tone, or, our, or rather our volume, uh, is here. And uh, it is in between. Um, it's actually right before the phase inverter. What we may end up doing is leaving uh, everything from the phase inverter to the output roughly the same, um, including the tone stack and the volume. We may leave most of this pretty similar to what it is already. We'll probably uh, do some tweaks on the tone stack, I'm sure. Um, mainly what we're going to do is get rid of this tuner input because we won't use it. We're going to come uh, change this to a quarter inch um, and we'll probably change some of these values as well. Maybe get rid of this cap and just do it like a standard um, sort of guitar uh, amp input. Um, this is all going to be point to point, so it should be fairly easy and fairly quick to accomplish. Um, right now there's an EZ80 uh, rectifier tube. I think for a little bit more um, a little bit more juice in this thing, I'll, I'll probably go with a 6CA4 or a 6BW4. Uh, I think those should offer me a little bit more um, in terms of voltages throughout the amp. And uh, may rework the power rail a little bit too, uh, but we'll see. Uh, may actually change, if anything, I might also change the uh, phase inverter to a cathodyne uh, phase inverter and uh, use this for an extra gain stage uh, before that. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. But at any rate, here's the schematic, and um, we're just going to go f with the... Uh, with the game plan of uh, changing this to a quarter inch, uh, coming in here, getting rid of the tuner and the switch, and uh, we'll kind of go from there and maybe do some tests and see what the tone sounds like. Okay, I'm back with this night amplifier and um, been chasing some motor boating around. Um, not sure exactly what's going on. As you can see, though, I've done some work uh, since we last looked at it. Um, changed all the caps, the whole the whole power rail's been uh, changed. Uh, changed most of the coupling caps as well. Actually, all of the coupling caps. Um, got the input uh, in over here. This is going to nothing. This is part of an experimentation. Um, I've actually changed this uh, this pot here in an effort to chase down this motor boating problem, but that that wasn't it. Essentially what's going on is uh, without showing you firsthand um, whenever you flip the amp on, if you turn this uh, if you turn the volume up past maybe a quarter of a way, it starts just going brrr, and just motor boating just out of control. If you turn it beyond that, it starts motor boating more quickly. Um, and I assumed 
that my uh, caps would have solved that problem, uh, but they clearly have not. Uh, so I've got something else going on here. Um, I've had this thing open. I've been doing a lot of little troubleshooting. It's kind of chopsticked around with the thing open and on. Can't really, uh, can't really seem to figure out what's going on here. I, I do have a, a couple of unusual components um, that uh, are becoming somewhat suspect to me. Um, here on the um, on the filament circuit, these are the filaments. Um, but right here, the, here's the center tap for that winding. Uh, this is the six volt winding. It goes through all these filaments. Um, and uh, the center tap out here, actually before it goes to ground, there, there are two um, there are two caps uh, to ground. I said it's not a center tap, and on this one there is no center tap, but they have capacitors uh, to ground here. It's kind of a virtual center tap sort of thing, but Usually you see a couple of uh, resistors, like um, 100 ohm resistors or something, to ground as a virtual center tap. But right here they have a some kind of weird virtual center tap using caps. I don't know if that might be causing the problem. And also, over here, uh, they also have caps um, to the actual center tap here and here which is unusual. You don't see that on, on uh, other amps uh, that I recall. I mean, here's just one other example. This is something I've just kind of been comparing things to. And you see here, this one has a center tap on the six volt winding. Uh, but even over here, you don't see those caps um, from each side of this secondary to, to the center tap um, ground. You just don't see that. Uh, so that's, that's different. And I think what I might do actually is disconnect these, disconnect these, and just go with something a little more standard, um, in an effort to to see if that is part of the motorboating problem. Now I know um, everything else I've done is fairly standard. Now this I've actually gotten rid of now, and I've I've come over here, and I think it's uh, I think I put in like a. Uh, I think I was like a hundred hundred ohm. I may put it uh, put it back to up to a meg, but move the move this over to here instead. Um, but yeah, I've, I've actually got everything fairly standard. Um, I just don't uh, don't understand where the motorboating is coming in uh, quite yet. I mean, we'll eventually track it down, but um, at the moment I'm kind of stumped. I've gotten rid of uh, this. And just ran um, coming out of our second stage, and we're just going here uh, to the volume. Uh, now this was kind of weird to me. I mean, this um, this grid stopper resistor, uh, this four seventy k seemed a bit high. Um, and I assumed it had something to do with the fact that they had uh, another resistor here, and this was the this was the tone stack right here, um, which is kind of weird because the tone stack is actually connected over here to the to the 16 ohm tap um, shielded wire, or it says shielded. I don't think it was actually shielded in the amp, but um, you see this whole network is actually just. Uh, connected to ground, so it's bleeding off some some signal, um, but it's also weirdly enough, you know, connected over here to this. I mean, that this is just a highly unusual um, tone circuit. So what I've done is actually disconnected this for the moment, trying to chase down this until I can figure out what's making this amp motorboat. And it was doing this with this connected as well. So to eliminate variables, I just disconnected this. So, and, uh, and this as well, so that none of that was hooked up. And I actually, what I've done is, um, I rewired this output, um, with a jack and I've got some negative feedback coming in too, about, I think this is a 22K, uh, on the negative feedback. So 
um, you know, in an effort to even stop their motorboating that way, I've, I've tried negative feedback and to no avail so far. So I think what I'm going to do again is come in here and do something different with these. Uh, I might I might actually start with this one because this one is more suspect to me than than this at causing the motorboating. So let's remove these caps and just see kind of what happens, and uh, then we'll go from there. Okay, we're back here with this little night amp, and uh, I think I have most of the bugs worked out now, and um, I've gotten a new. Uh, I've got a new tone stack uh, installed. The amp is on right now, so I'm not going to touch anything in here. But I've got a new tone stack installed, and we'll take a look at which tone stack uh, I put in here uh, in just a little bit here. Uh, I've got a new uh, three-prong plug um, and also a, a fuse uh, in line as well. Uh, there's a two-amp fuse in there. Um, let's see, what else? I've got a little bit of hum. Um, which I don't think is going to go away because, as you can see, the layout's kind of kind of funky. Um, you know, you've got your you've got your uh, rectifier way over here, and it's a six volt rectifier, so you have to have six volt line come going to this tube socket and also um, to these other tube sockets. Uh, not only that, but you also have uh, the input. Uh, both inputs were on this side of uh, of the amp, and there's really no other good place to put an input jack um, because it has to come all the way over here to this tube socket. Um, I suppose I could have tried to squeeze one in between up here somewhere and come straight to it, um, but that just would have looked funky and it wouldn't have it wouldn't have really done the amp many favors. I don't think, especially cosmetically and plus it would have been very difficult to um, to do anything up here so I didn't didn't opt to do that you know the tiny bit of hum that I have is actually acceptable because once you get this thing up to playing level you don't even notice it um, uh, but again I have that tone stack in and we will take a look at exactly which tone stack um, I ended up putting in there in just a, a second or so but you see everything, you know, it looks pretty clean. I've um, replaced pretty much every cap uh, in the amp. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's pretty pretty lean and mean and uh, ready to rock and roll. Let's, let's first look at the tone stock that was put in, and then we'll take a listen to it. One other thing I did forget to mention, uh, I did put in a virtual center tap on the uh, six volt winding uh, you can see here it's going from uh, one side of the six volt to ground uh, with a 100 ohm resistor and uh, you got another 100 ohm resistor going from the other side of the six volt uh, to ground here so um, you know if anything was going to quiet this thing down uh, that's that virtual center tap should have now if you'll recall I removed a couple of um, what I've considered kind of oddball um, caps that I suppose were doing the same thing and actually it was a two-in-one cap that has one cap uh, with three legs um, that I'm assuming was basically doing the same thing as a virtual center tap um, but this is a little bit more conventional uh, for a virtual center tap at least from what I've seen um, never really seen it done with caps before now that I recall um, but at any rate I have a, a conventional uh, virtual center tap on the six volt winding now so it you know I think that did quiet it quiet it down some okay as promised I uh, want to talk a little bit about the tone stack that I inserted into this amplifier and it's called the uh, back sand doll aka the James uh, tone stack um, and there is a website uh, if you're curious more about it uh, you can look in the description and I will link you to this um, website which uh, talks all about it. And there are plenty of other tone stacks as well, stuff from Fender and Marshall and so forth. Uh, but this one seemed like a really good one to try because it has uh, treble and bass. And it's um, this guy's talking about it, um, about getting pretty good results. And I've compared uh, the curves uh, to some of the Fender and Marshall uh, tone stacks, and it seems to hold up pretty well with a lot of, a lot of output and very low loss. Um, so here is that tone stack. Uh, here's the way it's wired. 
uh, in this amplifier. Again, if you're curious, just look in the description and you can see it. Um, and basically, if you're building one of these along with me, uh, you can basically insert uh, this tone stack uh, into the tone stack area of the, of the schematic. So um, there's the tone stack. Now let's uh, move along. Okay, one more modification I've made to this thing before closing it up and calling it a day is I've actually um, uh, added two uh, resistors on the input and uh, used this switch that was already existing in, in the uh, amplifier. Um, and essentially what I have here is just is two different um, uh, input attenuations. I have a, um, a 100 uh, K and a 47 K. So uh, it'll give you two uh, two different options there, and then it just runs uh, runs to the first stage from there. Uh, but that's um, that's a cool little mod, uh, something that uh, is definitely going to be useful uh, if somebody has a really bright guitar and they want to just attenuate the input a little bit. They can switch it down to that 100 K um, and just calm things down a little bit. Um, and on the flip side, if they want, if they want a lot of overdrive, they can flip it to the 47 and, and, uh, and use that. So, so yeah, that's, that's one mod, uh, that I forgot to mention, uh, that I've included here and this thing's pretty much ready to go. Let's, uh, let's take a listen to it. Well, as happens so often, whenever you're, uh, kind of designing a, a one-off like this, um, I tested this thing out briefly and noticed that. Uh, when I cranked the volume, I was getting some spikes, uh, some treble spikes on the output and uh, just unnatural sounding spikiness. So what I've done is I've come in here and put in what's called the Zobel network um, here. And uh, this is the same design that you'll find in a Hammond AO35. I've taken a few cues as I've gone along from the, a Hammond AO35. Um, there is one design feature in a Hammond AO35, and here's a schematic. And uh, you'll see it on the output here. Uh, this little network of a, of a 10K resistor uh, into a .0022 capacitor. Uh, and this is just across the plates of the two output tubes. And this kind of has the effect of suppressing um, spikiness. Essentially, that's what it does. Um, but uh, if you want to read up more on it, uh, you can look up Zobel Network and uh, read up a lot of the technical gibberish <laughs> that's out there on that sort of thing. Um, but, but essentially what it is, is it's these, these two components... Uh, actually, there's three components because I had to make up uh, the cap value of I didn't have the point to 0 22 so I uh, so I've got a couple there to make up the value. And here's a 10k, and uh, just put them across from pin seven to pin seven on the outputs, and uh, that should help suppress some of the spikiness. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and change the phase inverter. Uh, tube. Uh, I'm going to change this to like a 12, probably like a 12 AT7 or 12 AY7, um, just to tame it down a little bit on the on the phase inverter stage, um, and we'll see where that gets us. I think that's going to get us where we need to be, um, but uh, you know, only really testing it out is going to tell. So uh, let's get um, let's get this thing buttoned back up again. Let's put our, uh, I'm, I'm, again, I think I'm going to go with a, probably an AT7, what that's going to give me, uh, about 60, about 60 uh, gain factor instead of 100 with the 12AX. Um, I may also experiment with like, um, with an AY or an AU even. Um, we will see what, what needs to happen, but uh, essentially, you know, that's going to tame down some of the output. Uh, it's also going to tame down some of the highs, and this certainly uh, should tame down some of the highs as well. So um, let's uh, button her back up and try her out. Okay, we're finally to the point where we can give this thing a proper demonstration. Um, I have it plugged in, and obviously I don't have the cover on it because I've been doing some tweaking, but uh, I have a 12AU7 uh, in the uh, phase inverter, and uh, of course we put that Zobel network in all across the, uh, the output, and... Uh, Going through a another little amplifier that I made here. This is actually a Hammond AO35, and I've I've got it hooked up to a 10-inch uh, Eminence uh, ceramic speaker, and we'll see what it sounds like. 
uh, with a Telecaster. Right now the um, bass and treble are more or less straight up and the volume is a little bit past halfway. We also have a, uh, a pad on the, on the input here, this little switch. Again, uh, you saw where I wired that up um, so that it's uh, attenuated at different uh, levels. And uh, right now I have it at the, I have it set on the 100K. Uh, we'll try it on the 60, or on the 47K also. cabinet is made from is, a, is an Amway uh, salesman's demonstration box for a water treatment um, package. <laughs> so this is another one of my heavy trash finds that I decided to build a, build a Hammond AO35 into. And it works out okay other than the handle's kind of noisy, but um, that's why I've got that wrapped up. <laughs>
Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more videos like this in the future and see y'all later.